I'm gonna issue guys all reckless driving tickets. Guilty by association. This story is not to feel sorry for us. If we did something illegal, we're responsible you know, for our actions. Believe it or not, this can pretty much happen to anybody. Every year since 2009, we would go out to West Virginia and we'd do these private drives, just like a handful of mischief people, five to eight cars at a time. And we'd go in November and right when the leaves change. Low traffic, clean roads, smooth roads, we go out there and have a blast. We do that for a weekend once every year. And it's not a race because when you go on canyon runs, you don't race each other. It's not, that's not the point. This is like a spirited drive. I wanted to do it one last time and get beauty shots. This is before drones. Dado, one of his hobbies was playing with these giant remote control helicopters. And he would attach a, a GoPro on the bottom and and, and film around. He has a black E90 M3 at the time. But he said, hey, look, you know, I can't get in trouble with the job that I have. So I'll stay towards the back, which I didn't mind because this is where we started buying GoPros and we put GoPros on all the other quicker cars or the faster cars up front. It was a three day weekend, 16 drivers, 16 cars, 10 passengers, so 26 people. Really good friends of ours. These weren't just random people. We had two firefighters in a McLaren. We had a federal cop. We had a military cop with us. Several people with top secret clearances with the government, a couple of military guys. These are the type of guys that will get in trouble if they got a really massive speeding ticket or even reckless driving ticket. It will affect their job. When we film mischief, we will never play around and go nuts in the Virginia DC area. If you've ever heard horror stories of Virginia, they're so strict. 20 miles over the speed limit is a misdemeanor reckless driving. It's on the same level as DUI. It's happened to me. I had to spend a couple of weekends in jail for going 83 and 55, which is terrible. Unfortunately, to get to the West Virginia route, you have to drive through Virginia. So it was a three-day weekend. Veterans Day was on a Sunday. We stayed the night in Harrisonburg where James Madison University is. Partied it up, had a good time at the bars. And then the next morning, we had more people meet us at our hotel. Get on the highway. It's like this four-lane highway 81 for about 10 miles before we get to Augusta County. It's kind of weird being with Dado and, and being at the back of the pack and letting everybody else go ahead. As soon as we got to Augusta and then we get started getting on the back roads, that's when everything went south. A lot of traffic on those back roads, so we were pretty much bunched up, not going that fast. A cop car came up behind, there was a 370Z behind us, a cop car came around us and the McLaren and then disappeared around the corner. And Dado does what Dado does and stops, makes a U turn. I'm trying to call everybody on my cell phone to, hey, there's a cop coming up. We have no idea where it came from. No service. Pull into this, this dirt driveway. We get out and we're trying to figure out what's going on. As we're just standing there, the game warden comes around the corner, sees us and like dramatically like slams on the brakes and, and backs up and says, hey, you guys with that, that group of cars? We're like, yeah. So he comes up and parks. He's like, license registration. We had a couple phone calls and, and, and on you guys, no big deal. I'm not driving, I'll take one for the team. Here's my license. You know, Dada didn't want to get in trouble. And when I gave him my license, I was standing against Dada at the back of Dado's M3 and the cop reached around me and grabbed the GoPro that was on top of the, the trunk. And then Dada was sitting inside his car and he was trying to remove the GoPro in the windshield and the cop came and took that. He's like, I need this for evidence. Goes to the Z, pulls off the GoPro off the Z. I need this for evidence. And we're just like, wow, you can't do that. But kept their mouth shut. So over another five minutes, two more cars, in our group made a u-turn came down around the corner the police truck was right there so he stopped them another cop car came up now we're six cars on a, on a dangerous curve on this back road so they said hey no we have your licenses just follow us a couple miles up the road and there's like a clearing it's called headwaters there's like a, a little gas station post office and me and dado pulled in somebody's driveway this guy named deputy ross he was the first cop that we saw that was on the scene so he was considered their arresting officer so he was kind of running the show while we were Dealing with the game warden, my friend Matt, he has a Lime Rock M3. He was just sitting there waiting for the cars to come back. Everybody just split up. So he's sitting there and a cop car came up, asked for a license registration. I guess he saw his GoPro, he's like, I want the GoPro. And so my friend took the GoPro out of the window and gave the cop the GoPro. Uh, Deputy Ross got the GoPros that, that were confiscated and mixed up all the SD cards. He's trying to get the SD cards to work in his, I guess he had to download some stuff. It just took forever. They took all the GoPros without warrant. And plus at this time, nobody did anything wrong. 
It was just a phone call. But we don't know if the other guys, half the group was gone. If they caused an accident, nobody knows because we still have no cell phone service. While all this is going on, the rest of the group are in the mountains split up. One by one, cars are getting picked off by police up there. The cops were really cool. They're like, hey, look, you know, we got some phone call complaints I'm from Augusta County. So it's a beautiful day. We're not gonna ruin your day. Have a great time because they're used to people coming through there. Enjoy yourself, take it easy, bye. Let the friends go. So all the cars, that are up in the mountains kind of came together. They get into this one small town, Monterey County. There was a police roadblock and it shuffled everybody into this bank parking lot. And they did it at this intersection before the main highway where people can escape. Because where we were at, we were pretty much blocked by the police on both sides of this 15 mile road in the mountains. So they're trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. The police said, well, you're wanted in Augusta County and we're gonna take you back to Augusta County. And they went around and took more GoPros off the cars. They were there for like 10 minutes and he said, okay, everybody in their cars, they're gonna get an escort back to Augusta, back at headwaters where the rest of us were in the valley. Officer Ross saw video of us racing on Route 66 in Virginia the night before, but he can't tell from what car. So he gets frustrated, gets out and yells at everybody there. You guys are racing, I have the evidence here. You're all getting reckless driving tickets based on guilt by association. And I'm impounding all your cars. I've been through this before. I'm trying to calm everybody down. And now everybody's freaking out. And I'm kind of freaking out a little bit too. And the officer's there were saying anything at all. It was this one guy, younger guy, running the whole show. How is he gonna get tow trucks out here? He called over a dozen tow trucks from three surrounding counties to get our cars out of that area. While the tow trucks are arriving, the second group is coming down off the mountain really slow. So when they're coming down the mountain, they can see the valley on the right-hand side and they see this chaos of cop cars everywhere and then tow trucks coming up from the other end. It's funny, they took the GoPro cameras, but I hit all the rest of our cameras and plus we could use our phones. I have a video of it's like the parade of shame coming down the mountain. There was really no place for them to, to pull off. The Ross, the, the guides said, hey, tell them to go park into this field. Well, these are lowered cars with you know the carbon fiber lips and everything. And they're like, officer, we can't because there's a ditch there. They said, we don't care. The car kept on getting damage after damage just to pull them on the grass out of the road. As much as you want to say, hey, you have no right to do this, that's where you get yourself in trouble, especially in an old town. So think of this, Sunday, you get in trouble, they put you in jail. Monday's a holiday. Then you have to wait until Tuesday to get out of jail. You're four or five hours away from home. And how are you going to explain that to your boss? It's just keep your mouth shut. We had to keep everybody cool. We had no service, so none of this went on social media. Because I was, I was, I was, look at the cop. Yeah, I wanted to put it on social media because I wasn't thinking it would go this far. While I'm filming some of the cars coming off the mountain, in the background, you can hear another cop talking. So I kind of have some bad news and good news. The good news is that we're not impounding your cars. The bad news is that since we can't cancel all the tow trucks we ordered, in order for you to go home, you have to tow your car out of the area. And we're like, what? He said, yeah, don't worry about it. You get to go home. They made it sound like you're not, car you're not getting impounded. But the only way you can go is to pick a tow truck, take that to the nearest ATM, pay them, and you're free to go home. The reason is because he's already got the tow trucks committed. Okay, so we, we it, have no way but we can, we can we can get the cars. Yeah, you get the cars. Okay, fine. We just that, we don't have no uh, way of counseling. We, we know oh, that works. Radios. As long as we can get out of here. My one friend, Ryan, was his wife there, and they had a Supra. They come out and they're like, oh, I'll follow you to the ATM. I don't want my car damaged on the truck. And then Ross says, no, they have to be towed out of the area. The only car that couldn't get on the tow truck was a McLaren. Understandable. I didn't care at this point. Let's get the data. Let's get on the first tow truck and get the hell out of here and try to figure this out, see where he drops us off. And they have no idea back at his office, you know, where to go. So he said, well, you know what? I'm just gonna drive to the Augusta Police Department and see what they wanna do. He was kind enough to let me unload Dado's car with all, you know, our, our extra evidence and stuff. And I hid it against their building up behind bushes. So when they brought the car into the impound lot, there was nothing in it. They're like, we don't want these cars. Just drop them off at a gas station. And they come back up with the car and said, pack it all up, we're gonna drop you off down the street. Dropped us up down the street for like 200 bucks. The rest of the gang was all getting towed up and brought to different parts and different counties wherever it was closer to the next ATM. So at this point, they scanned this out of $3,500 in towing charges for no reason at all. I'm sitting here and like, they did all this based on phone calls. There was not one police chase because most of the people were either parked, trying to figure out what's going on or they're doing the speed limit. 
They've gotten pulled over before by other cops and then let go and then they rounded everybody up and they did all this to us. Everybody got a reckless driving ticket written by different police there because there were so many of us. There was nothing said about the seven GoPros that they took from us and nothing was said at the time with the, with the tow charges if we're gonna need that back or if any of the cars are gonna be repaired. We finally got everybody together at this restaurant and we agreed, keep it off social media, just keep it quiet and just get this over with as soon as possible. Kind of helped us out. Uh, there was a, a local college there and I had a car club, Friends of Mischief. They knew we were gonna come out there. One of the kids' parents was in the real estate and they had a house for sale on the side of this mountain with a runway, a private runway. So they wanted us to come and race them for fun. It was a good way to, to blow off some steam. The reason that that's important, I'll tell you in a minute. The next day we go home, there is a couple new stations down there, the car club caught and they're looking for Witnesses contact the police department, which was a good sign for us because they didn't have any. At the beginning of this story, I said, this can happen to anybody. All this happened without the police knowing what mischief was. We were a car club, so it means it can happen to anybody. Then I get an email from Jalopnik, and Jalopnik is like an automotive blog. One of the guys from the DC area contacted me, say, hey, were you part of this car club? Of course, I'm not gonna answer. Jalopnik, they called Augusta County, found out I was involved, told Augusta County all about what mischief was. When Jalopnik came out with their article, the police department did this big press release that they caught mischief. A production company were filming in a legal race rally in their county. They mentioned a retired officer, Copper, said that he witnessed us reckless driving from his porch, his front porch. I'm just like, oh my God, because now, of course, on Jalopnik, all the car forms are going crazy. I'm getting all these emails, you know, and we have to keep our mouth shut. So Thursday, the warrants for the GoPros come out under my name with all the serial numbers of all the GoPros. We found that later on, but they got the, they got the warrants to, to search the cars for those GoPros four days later. And same week, there's a local Washington Post reporter. He contacted me. He's like, I want to do a story about mischief, not about what happened, just about you guys. We knew it was BS. I ignored his phone call. For the next couple weeks I'm talking to every single person trying to keep everybody together now we're looking for lawyers we start calling the local lawyers and we know all the lawyers are in on it because it's a small town oh we've heard about you normally we charge five hundred dollars but this is complicated all of a sudden it's two thousand dollars twenty five hundred dollars per driver they wouldn't take more than one of us I got one of those flyers in the mail when you get a traffic ticket about a lawyer that could help you out and it was this, this lady named Sheila and she didn't live in, in Augusta. She's like, that. this is something they always do. I will take all of you, I don't care, I hate that county. 10 of us signed up with her, with her. She was awesome. A couple other guys got their own personal lawyers and so everything's pretty quiet until December 23rd. So on the front page of the Washington Post, we look and street racers and my name's in there and mischief and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm reading the article, so poorly written. Guess what? Story changes. In the, the Washington Post, we run Officer Copper off the road in his pickup truck. Now all of a sudden, I am leading 20 mile police chase at speeds over 100 miles an hour through these back roads. And I'm reading this like, this is, this is crazy, you know? I, I, I'm like, this is the most unbelievable thing. Of course it's the Washington Post, but I'm just like, they didn't get anything right. I didn't even drive that day, you know? It does sound pretty cool that I was evading police in a black M3, it's so mischief. But it didn't happen. Article comes out, then becomes the week-long death threats. because People want to be part of the story. So on the Washington comment section, they start posting up addresses where we live, our MySpace photos from back, you know. Now everybody that was on the verge of losing their job are panicking because this is coming out. The next year, the one thing we were worried about if they would grab one of our drivers to turn them against us, since they didn't have any real witnesses. They kept on changing the court dates because the cops couldn't get, they were, they were up to something. We knew they were up to something. And they changed the court date except one guy, and it was the military cop. He was gonna be the guy to turn against us. However, they picked the wrong guy because he's the last car that got stopped, didn't see anything. His lawyer was working with the police. And then they wrote him a letter right before he went to court. It was basically a letter to me saying that we're going after Dustin for maximum jail time, which is 12 months, $2,500 in fines, because they've been caught doing this the exact same thing last year. That was all a lie too. And I'm just sitting there like, they're playing all these crazy mind games. He goes in and, 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 and tells his story to the police. but. He didn't really see anything. His plea bargain for doing that was $1,200 in fines and 200 hours of community service. And he lived five hours away. Just like, he helped you guys out. And it was, it was the craziest thing. Then another friend of mine was just sick of waiting. 
he got his lawyer to go down there and watch all the videos to make sure he wasn't, you know, on the video driving recklessly. He was able to get out of it. So they gave him $500 disobeying a sign. So he took that instead of the reckless driving. So then that's good. That, that, that's some hope for us. The court date in April. We get there, never met the lawyer before. She said, okay, so they want to go after two people really hard, Dustin and the guy that owns the McLaren. I don't know why I think because they said that maybe because that was the most exotic car of the group they want to go for the rich guy too. I'm not sure. I'm like, I'm going to jail. <laughs> I'd rather me go to jail than them lose their jobs. I'm the one that set this up. I, it, they're my friends, you know? Before we go into the courtroom, I find out by my lawyer that they know that I wasn't the driver that day because I kept my mouth shut. They watched the videos, but that inf piece of information didn't come out until that day. So all the drivers were presented a plea, which was $500 disobeying a sign. Also, it included giving up your GoPro, which goes around that whole mess of not having a warrant for the GoPro. And they would have to all testify against me. But now that I'm out of the picture, it's, it's pretty much a solid deal for everybody. There's no reason to continue this on, you know, appealing it. These guys wanted, they were, they were so beaten up by it online and by their bosses and, and, and every, the, no, just get it over with, go in the courtroom, and it was a small courtroom, it was just us, judge, and, and all the police officers involved, laughing up there, having a good time. Prosecutor comes out, makes this important announcement. They wrote us all tickets in their wrong county. We were in Highland County when he gave us tickets for Augusta. And they were Augusta cops. Should have been all thrown out right there. No, it wasn't. They were so embarrassed by going and running, they just wanted to nail us so hard. Everybody came up there and took the plea. And then I came up there and I said, not guilty. And the judge is like, look, like, my kids have gotten harsher penalties for speeding than you guys. He's like, do you have any footage, any other footage that wasn't confiscated? And I, I look at the, my lawyer, she would not look at me. I said, yeah, I do. He's like, okay, I don't want to see any of this future footage that you have, this whole drive on a future DVD. No problem, your honor. As soon as I walked out, the judge is like, well, we are going to go after your, your friend, Dado. We know that he was a driver and we're gonna go after him hard. Up to this point, we spent over $30,000. The tow charges were never brought up. Damage to the cars, pulling them in the grass, never brought up. No apologies for anybody. And this all happened within a one hour drive that we did. The guy that had the McLaren, he had to reschedule his court date. He got the same deal as everybody else. The military cop, he got his changed over to the $500. Give up your GoPro. Now it's time to clear my name. Of course, none of the, none of the newspapers, nobody would, would write another article or, or, or retract it or anything like that. I figured so. But I wanted to sue the, the Washington Post for what they did to us. I'm considered a public figure. It'd be a waste of money. Great. When all this was over to explain that our cars didn't get impounded, the evidence was racing with these college kids on this runway. Almost a year later from that exact court date, Dado was driving to work in DC and he was pulling into a parking garage and there was a cop on a bicycle and they saw that his emission sticker was expired and they, they ran his license, pulled a gun at him, arrested him on the spot to take him to the local courthouse to get booked. There was a warrant for his arrest for Augusta County. So luckily he ended up getting the same deal. This is the first time really talking about it. Most of us carry around wallets that look a lot more like suitcases than like a toolkit for what we actually need for our day. The Ridge makes a line of wallets and bags that help you to carry exactly what you need and nothing you don't. So leave the junk at home and go to ridge.com slash vinwiki and use the code vinwiki at checkout for a discount. Let them know how much you appreciate their support of the vinwiki channel.